All right, so now we're going to paint details on top of our base coat on our mask. So um, we'll use the same paints. Make sure that you use the brush to fit the job. Don't try to paint nice pointy teeth with a big, fat, enormous brush. And um, just wash it off. You know, this is water-based temper paint. It's going to do great. Try to have some clean edges on your mask too. Just because you um, are making a ferocious mask that may be a little bit threatening or scary doesn't mean you're making a sloppy mask. You can still be scary and neat at the same time. In fact, it looks a little bit better. So just kind of pay attention. Use those. Take your time. Um, ask your neighbor, what do you think I need or what do I have too much of? Um, anything can always be painted over. And just put elements together on your mask so that you can start completing them. We're getting finished. All right. Let me show you a little bit of my thought process. Okay, now that I have a good base coat all over everything, I'm going to start adding the details in there. So go back to your original picture. If you want to change it, we've talked about this before, if you want to change some things from the original picture, that's fine. If you want to keep them the same, that's great. Now there's just a couple of things I think I'm going to change. It seems like the way I put this nose on, there's a lot more room on this side of his cheek than there is over here just because I didn't center it very well. So instead of having his mouth swoop off to the right with that big space on the right, I think I'm going to reverse it and have his mouth swoop off to the left because there's more room on the left just from where I put his nose. So I can make any kind of changes like that, all right? If you'd like to sketch them in in pencil first, do that very lightly. And be careful, it's really hard to erase on this paint. It shows up anyway, so you're gonna wanna kinda be careful about drawing real dark. But just kinda pencil in a couple of things. I'll put it in his nostrils, I'm gonna put it in his mouth, and maybe just a couple of these lines in his face so that I have some kind of idea of where I'm heading with my paint. Okay, so you can kind of see how I've lightly penciled in his nostrils and his mouth, a couple of lines in his cheeks and his forehead. I know I have this line along his ear, but that's a ridge. I think I'll be able to see that and I don't have to pencil that in. Now, the fact that one of his nostrils is a little bit off and not exactly symmetrical to the other doesn't bother me because in this case, he is a monster. And so that kind of off-center doesn't bother me. Um, when you paint, always start with the lighter color and keep adding on darker, darker, darker colors. So for example, I have that good pink base coat. I'm going to work in that red, the red violet, and then eventually end up with the brown and maybe even the black. On his teeth, for example, it's going to be very hard for me to layer white on top of black. Black's just too dark and powerful. So I'm gonna start with the white. I'm gonna paint this entire shape white first, and then I'm gonna paint in the negative space, the black, after it has dried a little bit. So let me get started on some of these things so you can kind of see how I progress and what I'm thinking. Okay, you can kind of see how I laid down that basic shape of white, and then I put in some of these a little bit darker. I was, you know, I don't want to jump all the way to purple or brown yet because I'm still a little apprehensive. So I just kind of laid it in with a darker pink. And when I think I'm happy with it, I'm going to start getting those colors darker and darker. This white may take two coats, although now that it's drying, it looks really good. Um, and then I'll, you can see I went underneath I'm trying to think, where would the highlights be? If the light came down on top of his ear, then the shadow's going to be under his ear. If the light came down on top of his eyebrow, then the shadow's going to be under his eyebrow. Those kind of things um, I'm just putting in there. I'm going to send um, a hair dryer with you so you can kind of dry the paints a little bit. Although, um, this is really soaking up the liquid pretty easily, and it's pretty dry already. So, um, I'm going to go and put on another layer. All right, so you can see how I am mixing up a little bit of red and purple together. That that red that I had, or the pink I had, and some purple, and getting this nice red violet to kind of ease it into those really darker areas. What I found was if I can lay down a nice crisp line with the original color, 
Then I can go back in with a dry brush and kind of feather it a little bit just to blend it so it looks like it's just fading from that dark pink to the red violet. And I can kind of mess with it a little bit that way. So I still have those crisp edges on there. So see how I feathered that one, but I still haven't done this one yet. So I can kind of pick up the texture almost of the mask itself and just use that dry brush stroke that we've used before in there to kind of help feather it out. So I'm just going to keep going in this manner and keep layering on different values. I'm real happy with the ears. So you can see I really laid in that that red violet along the edge and then just blended it and feathered it with the dry brush right out to the pink part. Anytime that you can prop your hand on the edge of your desk or with another hand to steady your brush, that's gonna give you better details. So just take your time, layer some stuff on there and just keep adding details.